well you know we're you know we're here today to talk about when the screaming starts because we can each uh, you know firstly mm -hmm. you know, take it in turns and introduce yourself and your connection to the project So I'm Caitlin and I play Claire in the film. I think we still need a couple of <laughs> Still technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, you're muted now. <laughs> Sorry, it was the double zoom was not working at all. <laughs> right, and I was I was just saying to to Caitlin, whenever I like jump on a call with people I used to work with, and there's like six or seven of us on the call for some reason. Although I always use the computer I normally use for Zoom things, it just dies, and I end up signing like a robot, and then no one can hear me, and then I don't get to catch up with anybody because I spend the whole time trying to like get a different connection. So <laughs> these things happen. But I guess we'll go with uh, you know take three. Uh, we're you know we're here to uh, to chat all things when the screaming starts. If you can each just you know firstly uh, introduce yourselves and say what your connection to the project is. Yeah. So hi, my name's Connor Brew, and I'm the director, co-writer, and one of the producers. My name is Octavia Gilmore, and I play Amy. I am also an executive producer on When the Screen Starts. And my name is Caitlin and I play Claire in the film. Yes. I mean, the uh, the film had its had its debut at Fright Fest last month. Uh, you know, what was the reaction like? I think you guys actually had, you had multiple screenings there. Yeah, I think it was a, I think it was personally, it was a fantastic uh, reception. Uh, obviously initially we sold out the screens, which is a, always a relief because you just don't know I mean we were in our home city it was in London so we had you know the family support but we also had a lot of the Fright Fest crowd coming down so yeah it seemed to get a lot of laughs a lot of gasps so I was pretty happy to be honest how about you guys yeah I was really thrilled with the response because being on the producing team I've seen it a lot of times uh so certain moments I just become used to seeing and then seeing the response the very visceral response in the audience was was really special yeah I enjoyed yeah. it. yeah I'd never seen it before uh, Fright Fest so that was really great because it just I got to be with the audience in that sense and just get to see it for the first time um, and then when I saw the second screening as well I got to like see things that I hadn't caught before and it was still funny the second time so yeah it was such a cool vibe um, I really enjoyed it. And I mean, I think, you know, next up on the, uh, on the festival tour, you've got Manchester with Grimfest and then you've got, uh, it was announced yesterday, you've got a screening in Utah. You know, is it, is it nice after all this time of sort of sitting on this film that you can now, you know, unleash it, you know, not just into the UK, but into the world? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we always just wanted to get the film out there far and wide. Um, and we, we targeted genre festivals, really. We thought that's where our audience is and, it's, it's had such a great reception, you know, we, we feel really privileged to have got into Fright Fest, had the world premiere there. Obviously now having the Northern premiere in Manchester, Grimfest is such a great festival. And now we've got uh, a US uh, festival, which is amazing. We've actually got a couple more, which we can't announce just yet, just because they haven't announced them, but looking forward to, to sharing those soon. Yes. And I guess obviously Connor, you know, Connor wrote the film, but you know, for, for you guys, Caitlin and Octavia, what was it about, you know, these characters that spoke to you and made you decide that, you know, you wanted to get involved and play them? Well, I read the script at the very first initial uh, read through, which was before Connor actually came on the project. It was sort of Ed's initial script and it has changed a, a load since then. Uh, but even at that point, I just was totally sold on the concept. I thought it was brilliant. And I thought mockumentary was a really strong way to take it. And then as Amy developed, because that character changed quite a lot, she just became more and more exciting to play. She's just really, she just does things that you wouldn't dare to do and says things <laughs> that you definitely wouldn't dare to say. And she's, yeah, a very strong character. I wouldn't mess with her, but she was a lot of fun to play. 
Yeah, I think that's what's so great about the script is that each of the characters have really strong personalities and they really stand out in their own way. Like that's what I really loved about Claire is that I um I was just kind of getting into the beginning of, of film and TV work. I mostly uh, studied theater and did, did theater. And um, so it was really nice to have like one of my first experiences on film to be such a character and to really be able to play with it um, and being on set with everyone as well. We could just kind of, you know, we would do the script and then have like improvs at the end and just kind of see where it went with each character. Um, and it was nice to have that freedom to do it as well. And as an actor, that's like the dream. I mean, Claire is, sorry guys, Claire is my favorite character. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I don't know there was just I don't know I guess there's there's something about you know as much as you know she's obsessed you know with with serial killers um but I guess it's something that a lot of people can sort of relate to and see in other people who you know is, there is this sort of you know, excessive fandom uh, mm -hmm. in the world that we live in and I guess in a way that is you know that is represented through Claire mm -hmm. in in this other way um I just thought there was something entertaining about that. Um, but you know, as we as we sort of move on to to Amy, you know, being you know female killer, that's not something that is that widely known in society. You know, there's a there's an early game of serial killer guess who, and you know, there's not many female faces on that board. You know, why did you guys decide that you wanted to sort of show that you know women can can do this too? Because I think you know out of the out of the group within the film, you know, there is a significant portion of, of female. Yeah, I mean, that was always, um, that was always something we wanted to, to explore, really, this idea of the female serial killer and having, you know, in the lead roles, uh, Ed Hartland playing Aiden, Jared Rogers playing Norman, we knew that from the very these guys were going to be buffoons, really, both of them in their own ways. Very different characters, but both inept, in their dreams, I guess. So we knew we wanted to have some strong female characters and it sort of developed organically. I don't know if it was a conscious decision to make the all the females the, the real deal, as it were, the, the stronger characters, the ones that are actually a little bit more deadly, I guess is the <laughs> word. Um, but it just evolved naturally. And yeah, I, I really like the dynamic we have in this family now of these strong female empowered characters and obviously in the wrong ways, mm -hmm. but still that they're the ones ruling the roost and these guys have just become crumpled messes around these strong female characters. It was nice to explore because too often, you know, with the serial killer genre, it is so male centric. So mm -hmm. it was nice to bring that. I mean, I guess, you know, for, for you guys as actors, you know, there's not there's not really many examples in films like this, you know, where female characters, you know, get to interact. You know, so was it nice that of having that sort of female connection together? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, just to have that, um, I think for Claire, Amy is kind of like what she aspired to um, and never really knew it until she met Amy. Um, and so to be able to have that, um, female character to look up to so she wasn't always trailing around Aiden once she figured out that Aiden really wasn't what he was you know playing out to be um she was able to find that um, new inspiration in Amy and that was really fun to like play off that dynamic yeah I I, I thought it was great from it was both working with Claire and the twins Claire and Amy obviously have this sort of a lot going on in their relationship. <laughs> special connection. So they have a special connection going on. And yeah, Claire looks up to Amy and I think the twins sort of almost become a Amy sort of sidekick, sort of henchman and, uh, or henchwoman. And, <laughs> uh, and that's a really fun dynamic to play with and it's interesting because I think what separates Amy from Aiden is that Amy isn't concerned about being famous she's not doing this to go down in history she's a bit smarter than Aiden in that regard and uh and she's doing it because she actually just wants to kill people 
<laughs> so she's got her own very twisted motivations, but in terms of ambition and fame, that's where she's quite different from both Aidan and Norman. And I think that's maybe one of the things that Claire's attracted to Amy is that she's the real deal rather than just uh, <laughs> dipping her toe in to see if she can make a name for herself. So, I mean, do you think that that maybe is something that's sort of reflected in society? Do you think that maybe there's, there's we don't know about many female serial killers because they are more careful than their male counterparts? Oh, gosh. Good question. <laughs> I, mean, I would really like to answer okay. that. Um, I, personally, I think for some reason that yeah. men just gravitate towards serial killing more than women, personally. Um, but that might be something we... We are yet to find out if women have just been a little bit more careful in their uh, mm -hmm. in their murders. So it's a very interesting question. I'm sure Ed Hartland would have a lot to say about this, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, what would you reckon? Yeah, it's interesting. I I'm a sucker for like the serial killer podcasts and things like that. Um, and it, it's something they they do talk about a lot. Um, but then you get those um, little nuggets of stories about like uh, you know some a lot of times it's like Bonnie and Clyde style stories um or these women who it, a lot of times it turns out that they it was sort of a revenge story things like that so sometimes um it seems like not all the time but wh when women do come up in in these categories it's quite a uh, interesting backstory that comes with it there's a lot that's built up to get them to that point mm -hmm. yeah yeah. I mean, obviously, both, you know, all the characters in the film, they all have, you know, their own certain certain look and they're all a very particular sort of character. You know, how do you guys as actors sort of approach getting into their mindsets? Because, you know, I'm hoping that they're slightly different to, to yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> there's, I think there's probably a little bit of, of the characters in all of us. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like with Claire, I found it hard to keep a straight face on set because she had to just be very, um, you know, stoic. Um, and with it being a comedy piece, I really had to, you know, swallow and just not smile a lot of the time. But um, I think as well, like, just being an actor, being able to play with um, something that's so far from myself is what's most exciting about it and what makes it really fun. So it's just like playing, um, you know, playing dress up and getting to put on a, a character and put on a face that I wouldn't normally have in everyday life. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've touched on something there. The costume, hair, makeup, is a big part of that process. Uh, for Amy, I was in the hair and makeup chair for a very long time and I look very different with my short red hair and very dark eye makeup. So then when I would sort of turn and look in the mirror afterwards, you do feel like a different person, which is really helpful for performing. And uh, yeah, I although Amy is very far from me. You just sort of have to find, you know, moments where you felt those emotions of anger or frustration or, you know, a lot of the film, I think Amy's just looking around her and thinking people are incompetent. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I think, you you know, we can all relate to those moments where you're just uh, wishing you were somewhere else or or just getting frustrated. So just dipping into that and... Yeah, I just thought she was so much fun to play. Uh, so yeah. I always really enjoyed playing her. Yeah, we, we definitely took what these guys were bringing to the table and just expanded on it, really. They, they were both involved from the very beginning, from early read-throughs. So we took what, what they were bringing, even in the audition stage, um, because Claire wasn't, as an example, wasn't written as, a, as an American character. Mm -hmm. um, and she wasn't quite as um, stoic maybe as, as she became and in, in the initial drafts. I don't know if you remember this, Caitlin, but she was a little bit more happy and, and enthusiastic, mm -hmm. but we sort of took the energy that Caitlin uh, brought to that initial audition and just played off that. And then because we sort of did the film in two main blocks, after the first block, we really could play around with the ideas they brought to the, the first block and bring that to the second block and just 
expand on their characters, the backstories. Mm. So yeah, it was it was a it was a really uh, symbiotic relationship of just like feeding off what they were bringing with the improv and stuff, and and then working that into the script and the edit. And obviously, kind of, you have a uh, you know you have a background in in acting. Do you think that, that helps you when it comes to directing and to writing for writing as well for for other people? I think it does because obviously Ed Hartland is an actor as well. So when we were writing, we would <laughs> we would tend to uh, act out all the different scenes um, with our bad accents included. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think think it helps. Um, a lot of these actors I've worked with many times over the years. Um, Caitlin was actually new to the team, um, so we actually auditioned her for the role um, through uh, Yasna Tor, who's one of the producers and actors. He he met Caitlin through Film Club, an acting course that he runs, and uh, he brought in a load of selection, a lot of choices, different, very different energies, different flavors, and, and Caitlin just really stood out. And um, yeah, I like to think that we're all now we all speak the same language, and and after the initial, you know, just getting used to everyone. I didn't really have to direct them too much. It was just little pointers here and there. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? More so than, you know, having to give someone a line reading or any of that. So. And like you say, you know, the film, obviously, I think it was it was pretty much shot pre-COVID, but then you had to still go back and do some stuff post-COVID. So, you know, how for you guys, you know, as actors, uh, you know, was that sort of having to sort of sit on this character and then, you know, return to them later on? Yeah, I was quite nervous actually about that. I was thinking, oh gosh, have I forgotten how I was playing Amy? Will it be consistent? Because I think Amy is quite different from how I behave. And I, I, was, a, I was slightly concerned about that, but you just have to, you know, trust your instincts. And essentially, you know, her character still had the same beliefs, thoughts, so I just really locked into that and uh, and hope for the best really and I don't think you can tell what was shot uh, post lockdown. <laughs> yeah definitely, um, yeah it was kind of weird because uh, it, it was quite a long time period and then also like so much happened in our lives as well um, but going back into it was really nice um, and just being able to uh, get back into the film world and back on set with everyone. Um, and once I got there, it kind of felt like we never left. Um, even though it was only a couple of weeks that we filmed in the first block, it felt like such a, a good solid period of time. Um, and so we were able to develop the characters in, in that bit and then come back and I can, you know, I've had that time to reflect on it and be like, ooh, I'm gonna maybe, try this this time or I, I felt a lot more confident in the character um, and just in being on set in general so I think that really helped as well um, just having that first block and then some time to reflect and then come in with a bit more confidence. And I guess obviously it also helps you know you guys you know do all know one another as much as you know Caitlin you were new to it by then obviously you all sort of knew each other so I guess it was nice just to be with with people again. Yeah. Oh most oh. definitely. <laughs> It was fantastic to get back on set. Obviously, a slightly different vibe. Everyone wearing masks and just sanitizer everywhere. Temperature guns being pointed at you as you walk in the door. But, you know, there was still very much a, a, a good energy, a good sort of family spirit. You know, you really make connections with people on film sets, even though, like Caitlin says, it was only a couple of weeks. But there's all the prep work before that. There's time sometimes between uh, shoots and... Yeah, you just make a, a real bond in a short amount of time. And when you come back, it's it's like Caitlin said, it's like you've never left. And I guess sort of my, my next question would be, you know, during the during the film, uh, you know, Claire and Aidan sort of audition people to uh, to be part of their family. And one of the questions that they all get asked is who their favorite serial killer is. So I guess, you know, uh, if you guys had to had to pick a favorite, who uh, who's your favorite? <laughs> No, Gosh. no comment. Yeah, no comment. It feels <laughs> like quite a dark thing. I don't think I have a favourite serial killer. Um, yeah, I think I think I. Yeah, no, I haven't ever thought of them in, in that sort of regard. I mean, there's definitely serial killers. You find again, it's the whole genesis of the idea through through Ed Hartland. Like you do find yourself gravitating towards certain stories and certain you know certain serial killers. I guess. 
Um, and that was something we really wanted to, to, to play off in the film is, is people do become intrigued. It's like a morbid fascination, but but equally at some point it seems to tip the other way where it becomes more than just a, a healthy interest, like a human interest, and it starts to become more of a, a worship or, a, you know, these, these they become almost celebrity figures in some yeah. people's eyes. Um, I mean, I've, I've recently been watching a documentary about the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Ripper. And I mean, it's, yeah. It's fascinating. I can't, you know, you can't deny it. It's, there's something innately human about wanting to understand how someone can commit these acts. But yeah, favourites is, is a is yeah, a, probably not quite the right word. I guess. <laughs> you know, which, I guess I guess I would sort of rephrase it. You know, which 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 serial killer do you guys find the most fascinating? Hmm. Um, well, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Ted Bundy because of the response to him, particularly in women, is very fascinating. Um, it's really interesting sort of the feelings that a serial ki killer can bring up in people. I think that's what's fascinating, just as fascinating as, as their psychology. It's people's response to, to their kind of wrongdoings and how that can be a positive response is really interesting. So yeah, I enjoyed the Ted Bundy tapes, but enjoyed again is completely the wrong word. I sort of went through them and was like, I really hate watching this, but I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I quite like uh, fictional shows about serial killers. So I was going to say Dexter is my favorite serial killer because he's not real. <laughs> yeah. um, and like it's such an interesting character. Um, so yeah, I, I probably know more fictional ones and watch more fictional ones. I can watch some of those serial killer documentaries you know, very occasionally, but they're quite intense. Um, yeah. But it, it's almost like, it, it is almost like that that car crash, you just can't look away. Um, it's very interesting how we are glued to that in a sense. And like listening to podcasts about serial killers, like my boyfriend thinks I'm insane. <laughs> but it's just something so fascinating about it. Maybe we're trying to work out what to avoid any clues or tips or survival tactics to, to make sure you stay away from these people. Because sometimes, you know, they're the cliche, what you imagine a serial killer to be. And other times they are like Ted Bundy. And you just think you would have no idea if he lived next door to you, you wouldn't suspect him in, in, in any degree. You know, he's so seemingly normal. So yeah, it's quite, quite worrying. <laughs> And uh, as our time is uh, is running out, I guess sort of my last question for everybody is, you know, now that this is out into the world and the world is slowly opening up, have you uh, have you all got your your next projects lined up? Yeah, well, we're yeah. currently um, working, you know, as a team on various different projects, uh, feature films, TV ideas, uh, lots sort of percolating at the moment. We've got some further ahead than others, but we're hoping to just start moving with some, some more films ASAP. Yeah, Ed Hartland and I, Ed being a, playing Aiden and also co-writer of When the Screaming Starts, we are putting the finishing touches uh, on a feature film. Uh, so yeah, we're getting that screenplay you're almost towards the finish line, uh, edging there slowly. And that's a, it's got elements of thriller, horror, comedy, and uh, yeah, so hopefully we can look at that. And we we actually have a, a TV pilot script. We've got a lot, I've got, you know, been writing, we've been busy writing during this time. And yeah, so hopefully some of those will, will come towards pre-production stage in the near future. <laughs> We're moving, we're moving. Yeah, I admire these guys for writing and stuff because I, I, well, I don't know if I would be any good at it because I've never tried it, but even just to like get yourself on the computer and write something down is is very difficult. So I seriously admire you guys. I'm, I'm just, I say just an actor. I solely do acting. So I usually uh, rely on other people to give me jobs. But <laughs> the uh, thing I'm looking forward to upcoming is that I can finally go home to America now. So that's my next project, just going going home for a little bit. Is it, is it November? Sorry? Is it November? Yeah, November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're just about going to miss uh, Film Quest, I think. We would have gone out for it otherwise. 
but um, unfortunately we can't get out until November. So we're sending Jared Rogers, who plays Norman, out to represent the team because he lives in Florida now. So at least we have Jared there flying the flag for us. <laughs> Lala, I wish you guys the best of luck with the screening. Oh, thank you. <laughs>